नमो विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठायाभूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदंत स्वामी नम नमस्ते सरस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारी निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पश्चाता दशतारिणे जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जान बल्ला गिरी बर गोपी जान बल्ला गिरी बर Jai 
Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Yamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balava Giri Paradari Gopi Jana Balava Giri Paradari Yashoda Nandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Praja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Rama Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Rama Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare. 
Nitai go hari bo, hari bo, hari bo, nitai go hari bo. Jai Jai Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Prabhu Pad, Jai Shiva Prabhu Gaur Premanande Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tinamani Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschachate Shatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Chayam Uthirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki uh, We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 8, Text Number 10. Dashyan Purasanno Vijet Jalampato Manyanta A.K. Swajita Disho Dasha Jitatmano Gyanashya Samashya Dehinam Sadho Swadmoha Prabhava Kutapare Dashyan Purasanno Vijitya Lumpato Manyanta A.K. Swajita Disho Dasa Jitatmano Gyashya Samashya Dehinam Sado Swamoha Prabhavat Kutapare Dashyam Purasanno Dvitatya Lumpato Manyanta A.K. Swajita Disho Dasha Jitatmano Gyashya Samashya Dehinam Swamoha Prabhava Kutapare Others, Chen, yeah? 
marriages What meaning? यदि कोई व्यक्ति 
इच्छा शत्रु पर विजय होता है और सारे जीवों पर संभाव रखता है तो उसके लिए शत्रु नहीं होते शत्रु की कल्पना मूर्तवश की जाती है इस संसार में प्रत्येक व्यक्ति सोचता है कि उसने अपने शत्रुओं को जीत लिया है किंतु वह यह नहीं समझ पाता कि उसके शत्रु तो उसका अभियंत्रित मन तथा इंद्रिया है मन सष्टानी इंद्रिया प्रकृति स्थानी प्रकृति इस संसार में प्रत्येक व्यक्ति अपनी इंद्रियों का दास बना हुआ है प्रत्येक व्यक्ति कृष्ण का दास होता है किंतु अज्ञानवश वह इसे भूल जाता है और इस तरह वह काम इच्छा क्रोध लोभ प्रमत्त तथा ईर्षा वश माया की सेवा में लग जाता है वास्तव में प्रत्येक व्यक्ति भौतिक नियमों के परिणामों पर आश्रित है फिर भी वह अपने को स्वतंत्र समझता है और सोचता है कि उसने सारी दिशाएं जीत ली निष्कर्ष यह निकाला जा सकता निकाला कि जो व्यक्ति यह सोचता है कि उसने तमाम शत्रु हैं, वह अज्ञानी है वह जबकि कृष्ण भावना भावित व्यक्ति जानता है कि मनुष्य के भीतर के शत्रुओं अनियंत्रित मन तथा इंद्रियों के अतिरिक्त कोई अन्य शत्रु नहीं है उम्म ज्ञान तिमरंदलाकायाथस्मयुरवे नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीतूतले स्वयं रूपकधा ददाति स्वापदंतिक वंदेहम श्रीगर श्रीयथापदकमल श्रीगुरुन वैष्णवश्चेप सक्रजा सहगनाथीव साइथम सवदूत परजना साइथम कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्णपद सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा निधंश हे कृष्ण खरन सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तते तप्त कांचन गौरंगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वंचकौपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतितनाम पवनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधा श्रीवासदी गोर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे वे आर हियरिंग प्रहलाद महाराज गिव वेरी इंपोर्टेंट इंस्ट्रक्शंस टू हिज एथिस्टिक फादर प्रहलादीमन जरूरी उनके खिलाफ उचित कार्रवाई करना
and they use different strategies. Sometimes they will try to bribe the enemy, they will offer some money or some position, and in this way they will try to control the enemy. Sometimes they will, uh, they will uh, threaten him just simply by giving instruction and telling him, if you don't cooperate with me then I'll have to take more serious action. And sometimes they will actually take action. They may have their enemies put in prison or they may have their enemies beaten or they may even have them killed. So Haranya Kashipu wanted Prahlad Maharaj to be trained in all of this, but Prahlad Maharaj had already been educated by his spiritual guru, by Sri Narada Muni. So he was not much interested in what he'd learned and from his material gurus, the sons of Sukracharya. They didn't mean anything to him. Just like many of you probably, when we go for material education, we study, we see here there's so many colleges, there's so many educational institutes and they're all teaching mundane knowledge which is practically useless. But so many people will spend a lot of money to get that kind of material knowledge. But that material knowledge cannot solve the problems of life, it cannot solve the problem of birth and death. So Prahlad Maharaj considered the knowledge which he'd received from his material teachers, from those sons of Sukracharya, to be useless. He had already learned spiritual knowledge from Narada Muni and he'd learned not to see friends and enemies but to see all living entities equally, to see them all as spiritual beings. So Prahlad Maharaj is, wants to awaken his father to that kind of thinking. Instead of making distinction who's your friend and who's your enemy, see all the living entities as spiritual beings. Of course this is this knowledge is not very appealing to somebody like Haranyakashipu. But still Prahlad Maharaj is a great devotee, He's, he wants to try to give that benefit, give that knowledge to his father. So he is explaining to them, to his father, that we have to conquer, that, that, that he said that the, the real enemy is actually within us. It's our own uncontrolled mind and senses which are the enemy. So, 
if we haven't got control over the mind, then the mind is the greatest enemy. And when the mind is not controlled, then the senses will also be uncontrolled and the senses will engage in all kinds of forbidden actions. So very important in all spiritual practice, one has to conquer over the mind and senses. We see the example in uh, the teachings of uh, Lord, Lord Kapila was teaching to his mother Devahuti about how to, that he was telling his mother that she should take shelter of a sadhu. She has to find a holy person, a saintly person to help her. Devahuti was in the position that her husband had gone away. Her husband, Kardama Muni, had renounced her and gone off to seek perfect enlightenment. Now, Devahuti was the daughter of Swayambhuvamanu, and Swayambhuvamanu had brought his daughter there to the ashram of Kadama Muni and asked Kadama Muni to accept her as a wife. So, Devahuti is and Swayambhuvam uh, and Kardama Muni had already been told by the Lord that a suitable woman was coming who would make a good wife for him. Kardama Muni had been doing Astanga Yoga for 10,000 years and after that then the Lord came and the Lord told him that he was arranging a suitable wife for him and that he should accept her. So then it happened a few days later Swayam Bhuvamanu came with his daughter and introduced his daughter to Kadama Muni. Kadama Muni accepted her as his wife. So in this way they, they were married, they were a couple and they, in course of time they also had children. They had nine daughters and one son. Their son was an incarnation of the Lord. And their son was Kapila who had come to propagate the Sankhya philosophy. And so this Kapila, he is the, he is the, there are two Kapilas, one is the atheist Kapila who is more widely known, but the Kapila in Srimad Bhagavatam is Devahuti Putra and he is actually the incarnation of the Lord. So after the couple had children, then Kadama Muni had warned his wife that after we have children then I will renounce again, I want to continue my renunciation. So it happened after they had children, Kadama Muni said, now I have to leave. But no problem because you have a son and your son will guide you. The son was an incarnation of the Lord, so he, you couldn't have a better 
guide than the Lord Himself. But Devahuti was feeling bewildered by the material energy because of the attachment for her husband. So she wondered, what is the solution? And her son, Lord Kapila, told her, you have to become attached to a sadhu. So then how to recognize a sadhu? And Lord Kapila describes the qualities of a sadhu. Tatikshiva karunika suridam sarvadehinam ajata shatrabhasantam sadhava sadhubhushana. That the saintly person will be tolerant, they'll be merciful, they're the friend of all living entities. And they have no enemies. There is the nature of the saintly person, one who is actually God conscious and spiritual conscious, they have no enemy. Srila Prabhupada, when he was purchasing the land for the Juhu temple in Mumbai, that land at Juhu, there was a great battle to purchase the land because the man who was supposed to sell it tried to cheat Srila Prabhupada. The man was planning to take the money and keep the land and he'd already tricked several people before. But Srila Prabhupada outsmarted him because Srila Prabhupada had been a businessman himself and he was from Calcutta and so he knew different tricks which are there in the world. So Srila Prabhupada immediately put the deities Radha Rasa Bihari there. And you all know being Indians, you know when you put the deity then nobody can move the deity. Even they want to build the highway or the airplane, airport or something but they will have to move it if the deity is there. So it was quite a battle because the man who was selling the land, he had the support of the municipality, he was an influential man and he knew a lot of people in the municipality and they were helping him. And so it was a great battle, and, but Prabhupada was the winner. You can read the whole story. There's a wonderful book written by His Holiness Giri Raj Swami describing the whole battle. It said, let there be a temple. So Prabhupada explained, he said, the, the man who is selling the land, he may think that we Hare Krishnas are his enemy, but we don't think he is our enemy. The devotee understands all the difficulties which ever are going on in the world, that they are all simply interactions due to the material nature. 
But a devotee in Krishna consciousness is not under the modes of the material nature. The devotee is always on the transcendental platform. Mamchayo vayabicharena bhakti yogena sevate sagunam samati jaikam brahma bhuyaya kaupate. That anyone who engages in devotional service without falling down, then they come to the level of brahma. So on the platform of Brahman, there's no question of friend or enemy. We see all living entities equally. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada quotes that verse, Manashastani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati which is from the 15th chapter of Bhagavad Gita where Lord Krishna describes that all living entities are my parts and parcels. But due to conditioned life we are struggling very hard with the six senses including the mind. Why are we struggling with our mind and senses? That is described earlier in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna describes the living entities. He's, first of all, Lord Krishna describes his material nature, how there are eight elements of the material nature. All right, the prakriti, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind intelligence, false ego. Krishna said, this is my eight material elements. But then Krishna, Lord Krishna said, Apari yamitas tvanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhuta mahabaho ye dam daryate jagat. This is why we are struggling with the mind and senses because we are claiming proprietorship. The Lord Krishna says in that verse, there is another energy of mind which are all living entities. As living entities, we are also Krishna's prakriti. But we're not thinking we're Prakriti, we're thinking we're Parusha. We're thinking we're the enjoyer. Actually there's only one Purusha, Lord Sri Krishna. We are all his Prakriti. We are the Prakriti, we are superior Prakriti. There's the inferior prakriti, don't matter. But the, the living entities is superior prakriti. We are superior because we have consciousness. This table doesn't have consciousness. But because we have consciousness, we are thinking that we are the controller. 
and we are thinking this inferior energy is all for my enjoyment. Therefore Lord Krishna said, Jiva Bhuta Mahabaho Yeidam Daryate Jagat that we are trying to lord over, we are trying to exploit the material energy. One life member came to Mayapur and spoke to Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada was asking him, what business do you do? Life member said, oh, I have a glass factory, I'm making glass. So then Prabhupada asked, so how do you make the glass? So the man says, well, we get sand and we melt the sand and mix, turns into glass. And then Prabhupada says, yes, and where do you get the sand from? Who gives you the sand? And the man said, oh, we have a mine, we have land and we have a sand mine, we take the sand from the mine. But Prabhupada kept pushing, the, yes, but whose sand is it? So then the man took up Prabhupada's point, he said, well, yes, everything belongs to Krishna. So Prabhupada then turned to the devotee who was with him and said, do you hear what he said? So the devotee immediate, immediately said, he's a thief Prabhupada, he's a thief. So Prabhupada turned to the life member and said, he says you're a thief. <laughs> So the life member said, well, I also give donations to the temple. <laughs> so then Prabhupada said, then you're only a little thief. <laughs> that is the nature of the material world, practically everyone. We're all thieves. We're taking what is Krishna's property and we are taking it for our own sense gratification. So Prahlad Maharaj is explaining to his father that we have to control the mind and the senses. There's a Godas and there's a Goswami. One is a master of the senses and one is a servant of the senses. And when the senses are not, un when the senses are uncontrolled, then the result is we engage in sinful activities and with sinful activities, we take another birth in the material world. We fail in the mission of human life. The Vedanta Sutra begins, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Atato meaning now, now you're a human being. Understand what is the difference between matter and spirit. So the Vedic literature are there to guide all of us to understand the mission of human life. So, 
to recognize that there is one Supreme Lord over everything and He is the Supreme Proprietor. And we are all His servants. Prahlad Maharaj wants to explain to his father the real principle of human life. And Lord Krishna came into this world to deliver this mission, the, the mission of human life, to explain this mission to everyone. But out of illusion, out of forgetfulness of Krishna, we are thinking, I am the proprietor, this is mine. Aham and mamiti, I am the body and this is mine. We are thinking, this is my country, this is my nation, this is my land. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Mother Earth, the, there's a song called the Bhumi Gita, the song sung by the personification of the earth, Mother Bhumi. And she's laughing at all the foolish kings who fought with each other. The kings fought with each other because they were saying, this is my land. One king said, this belongs to me. And the other king said, no, it belongs to me. And this way they fought each other and they killed each other. Before the kings were born, the land was there. And after they've gone from the world, the land will remain. This is the law of material nature. That this earth is, it's, it's prakriti, but it's also eternal. Just as we are eternal spiritual beings, material nature is also eternal. Sometimes it's manifest and sometimes not. But the ignorance is to think it's mine. And similarly, it's ignorance to think someone is our enemy. We have to understand who is the real enemy. The real enemy is this uncontrolled mind. So in Bhagavad Gita, we see Arjuna asking the question to Lord Krishna that, why are we compelled to perform sinful activities, even unwilling, as if by force? And Lord Krishna replies, it is lust only, O Arjuna, born of contact of the material senses and later transformed into wrath which is the all-devouring sinful enemy of man. So, Lord Krishna then goes on to explain more about the nature of lust that it burns like fire and is never satisfied. And he tells us where to find this lust. 
it's situated, it can be in the mind, it can be in the senses, it can be in the intelligence. And then Lord Krishna goes on to tell us how we can conquer over this lust. He says, by regulating the senses and cultivating spiritual knowledge, then we can conquer over this enemy. So this program which we have here in our temples every day, this Krishna conscious program, this is the process by which we can control the mind and conquer over this enemy of lust. So we take part in the activities, we come here together every day, we hear and chant and in this way we conquer over the uncontrolled enemies which are there within the heart. Be, they become subdued. Controlling the mind is an, always a challenge. It's, it's, it's like a wild animal. You know, did, did you ever try to train a wild animal? I, I know there were some people, I remember I w there was one man I knew in Jaipur, he had a lion, he kept a lion in his home, you know. <laughs> but he never trained it. But if you do want to train a wild animal, how do you train it? First of all, you capture the wild animal, you put it in a cage and you keep it in that cage and you don't feed it. And then after it's very hungry, then you beat it. Of course, I mean, animal rights people will be very angry, oh, this is very cruel, you shouldn't do this to the animal. But you have to understand, you beat it and then after you beat it, then you feed it. So in this way the animal learns. The animals, they also have intelligence and they understand. This man, very powerful, he put me in this cage and he starved me, didn't give me any food, then he beat me, now he's feeding me, I better do what he says. The same way, you want to control the mind, you want to conquer over the mind, you have to deal with it like a wild animal. You have to starve it, then you have to beat it, and then you feed it. The mind says, oh, don't go to temple today. You went last Sunday, why are you going to go today? No, you need, a, you need rest, you should stay home, watch television, there's a good Bollywood movie tonight, you know, don't go to temple. The mind will say, oh, don't chant Hare Krishna today, no, no, you've done enough chanting. 
you have to get the mind to do the things it doesn't want to do. When it doesn't want to surrender to Krishna, that's when you have to really beat it. You make it do what it doesn't want to do. You say, oh, you're saying I shouldn't chant. Okay, I'm going to chant more rounds today. We have to know how to deal with this uncontrolled mind. So it's certainly possible by Krishna consciousness. Of course, the goal is not just only to control the mind, but the goal is to go on and develop our love for Krishna. So that lust, which is the enemy, which was the cause of the uncontrolled mind, that lust, when it becomes purified, then it becomes prey. Actually, love for Krishna is there in the heart of every living entity. It is stated there in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunaye Shravanade Shuddha Chite Korehe Udai. Love for Krishna is eternally in the heart, but it has to be awakened by hearing. Just like you want to wake someone up for Mongol Arti and somebody, you know, they, they're sleeping. So how to get them up for Mongol Arti? You have to call them. Prabhu, Prabhu, come on, it's coming, it's time for Mongol Arti, you have to get up. So, oh, they don't want to hear, but you shout, no Prabhu, come on Prabhu. You know, by hearing they become awake. In the same way, by hearing about Krishna, our consciousness of Krishna is revived. We have forgotten Krishna since time immemorial. We are described as Nitya Bada souls. Nitya Bada, eternally we've been conditioned. The meaning is that we have forgotten Krishna for such a long time that it's like Nitya Bada. It's like we never remembered Krishna because we've forgotten him for such a long time. But the Nitya Bada doesn't have to remain Nitya Bada, he can become Nitya Siddha. He just has to engage in Krishna conscious activities. You become Jivan Mukta, a liberated soul, when you use your body, mind and words in the service of the Lord. So we use our body to dance for the pleasure of Krishna. We use our words to chant the holy name of Krishna. And we bathe our mind in remembering the glories of Krishna. <laughs> 
और अपने मन को भगवान के कीर्ति को कीर्ति का स्मरण करके In this way, we become nitya mukta, liberated souls. We don't have to be conditioned. So this is the glory. This is the benefit of coming to Krishna consciousness. That it transforms us from conditioned souls to liberated souls. So Krishna Bhavana Vidya Mani ka hi lab hai ki wo hume badhjeev se. Devotees of Krishna, they're all Mahatmas. They're all great souls. Lord Krishna describes the great souls. They're always chanting my glories. Mahatma nastu mam parta daivim prakritim ashrita. Those great souls are under the protection of my divine energy. तो भगवान बताते हैं कि महात्मा ये महान व्यक्ति ये हमेशा भगवान के नामों का जप करते रहते हैं और भगवान बताते हैं कि ये मेरे डिवाइन एनर्जी के शरण में रहते हैं But if we don't take shelter of Lord Krishna, if we don't chant the glories of Krishna, then you're under Goddess Durga. और अगर आप भगवान का शरण नहीं लेंगे भगवान का पुनः निवर्तन नहीं करेंगे तो आप माता दुर्गा के शरण Right, the Sarah is just beginning. Right, tomorrow or Monday, the the Sarah. So Mother Durga has her trident, and she's giving you those miseries of the material world. So, अभी नवरात्र शुरू हो रहे हैं और माता दुर्गा के पास जो है त्रिशूल है और वो बहुत ही तरह के कष्ट के लिए भी तैयार All the adi bautik, adi admik, adi daivik. A lot of suffering is there in the material world, and it's all coming through forgetfulness of Krishna. So Krishna को भूलने के कारण ये सारा दुख इस बात की तरह का आदि देवी का आदि बहुत ही आदि आदि बहुत सारा दुख है इस बात की तरह कि Krishna को भूलने की वजह से. So we have to take shelter not of Goddess Durga, but we take shelter of Lord Sri Krishna. And Goddess Durga herself is under the control of Lord Sri Krishna. All right. Is there any question? Yes, Prabhu. हाउ टू कंट्रोल आईज इन द टंग Well, in the past, you know, there was Bilva Mangal Thakur. <laughs> he had a problem with his eyes, so he plucked out his eyes. <laughs> So we don't recommend that. Mm. How to control the eyes? We should use our eyes to see the deities. Yeah, look at the beauty of Radha Madan Mohan and Lord Jagannath Baladev and Subhadra. In this way, the eyes will be very satisfied. So you you look at them and observe your eyes in them and take that memory with you through the day when you go out of the temple you remember the beauty of the deities. तो आप उनका सुंदर विग्रह का दर्शन करें उसमें अपने आप को अपने मन को लगाएं और पूरा दिन आप उस उसको स्मरण करें। And for the tongue we have to use the tongue to taste prasadam and to chant Hare Krishna. और जीवा जीवा से हमें कृष्ण प्रसाद पाना है और हरे कृष्ण का जप करना है
We have to be careful not to speak nonsense. Uh, there is Gramya Kata, the village talk. So that is called Prajalpa. So nonsense talk will cause nonsense thoughts. And with nonsense thoughts, then there will come nonsense actions. And nonsense actions will cause again birth, old age, disease and death. So we have to be very concentrated and serious to, con to control the tongue and as you mentioned also eyes. So it's practice. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was hearing about controlling the mind and he said, I can't do it, it's very difficult. But Lord Krishna said, well, I know it's difficult, but it's possible. Two things required, abhyasena tukontea vaira agena chakriyate. Constant practice and detachment. Yes, so we have to practice this controlling the mind. At least you're aware now, because you've come to Krishna consciousness, you're aware of how difficult it is to control the eyes and the tongue. So now you have to work on controlling them. It takes some practice. I preach sometimes in Buddhist countries like uh, Thailand. Thailand's a Buddhist country. So in Thailand, they train the young monks, they should look down. Don't look at the beautiful woman, look down. <laughs> so that's, that's their technique in controlling the eyes. And they also try to control their tongue. They don't eat after midday. They will only eat in the morning. They eat two meals. When I go for preaching, then I go for book distribution there in Thailand, people often ask me, how many meals do I eat a day? And they say, yes, a monk, a real monk can only eat two meals a day, he will not eat. Actually, when I became a devotee, you know, I joined the Krishna Consciousness Movement in the UK in 1971. So when I joined, they taught, the devotees then also taught me that Prabhupada said we should not eat grains after four o'clock in the afternoon. So this was, you know, similar. You know, the Buddhists, they're much more severe because their process is negation, stop everything. Our process is more gentle, you know. 
ये जो बुद्धिस्ट लोगों का जो विधि है उनसे थोड़ा थोड़ा मिलता है वो लोग बहुत ही कड़ाई से करते हैं क्योंकि उनके जो सिद्धांत है उसमें सब कुछ को हटाने का नेगेशन वाला प्रोसेस है लेकिन हम लोग का थोड़ा सरल है बट The same principle is there to control the tongue, that we do have to regulate the tongue. You don't want to be the slave of the tongue and eating food all time, all, at all times in the day and in the night. So that is the idea that we have to control our life, and we have to control our life, and we have to control our life, and we have to control our life. And we saw Prabhupada also. Prabhupada really never ate much at night. He take a little muli, you know, puff rice. And sometimes, sometimes I remember in England because very cold in England that Prabhupada would ask, make me a little halva at night because he said in the cold weather, if it said. I will pass urine in the night. It will disturb my rest. I won't be able to get a good rest if I have to wake up and pass urine. So he would ask somebody to make a little halva for him, and he would take some halva, and that would hold his urine that he didn't have to wake up to go and pass urine. So, the Prabhupada did that for the kinds of muli muli that they take into England. When the क्योंकि उन बहुत ठंड पड़ता है तो सर्दी के दिनों में प्रोपाइट नहीं आते थे कि मेरे लिए थोड़ा सा हलवा बना देते क्योंकि हलवा अगर वो हम कुछ नहीं लेते तो रात को उनको कुछ बार वॉशिंग जाना पड़ेगा और हलवा खाएंगे तो उससे उनका नींद अच्छे से नहीं हो पाएगा तो इसलिए प्रोपाइट रात को कभी थोड़ा हलवा लेते बट जनरली प्रोपाइट डिडेंट टेक अ बिग मील इवन कुक नोबडी कुक फॉर हिम एट नाइट यू नो लेकिन प्रोपाइट जी So in this way, you can control the tongue. I know it's difficult. I know people they work all day and they don't get time to eat. They come home at nine o'clock at night, and the wife cooks a big meal for them. They sit down and have a big meal, you know. All the ladies are smiling, <laughs> uh, but it's that's not really ideal. That's not the best way. Because the power of digestion is not there at night. The power of di according to Ayurveda, the power of digestion is maximum at midday. And it goes down. It's not much in the morning. It increases to midday. Then it goes down in the evening. So, because at night, our pachan shakti is very weak. I mean, with the ayurvedic rule, our pachan shakti is very weak. 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 Our pachan And in China, they have a saying in Chinese. They say that you should eat a good breakfast and eat a full lunch and eat light, eat very less at night. So, Maharaj says that in this nation, I am preaching. There is a saying in China. In China, there is a very popular saying that you should eat a good breakfast, eat a full lunch, and eat light at night, and eat very less at night. This way, you control the tongue. Is there a way to control the tongue? Yes. 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 Well, you remember the example about the chariot, that there's a chariot, five horses represent the senses, and then the horses are controlled by the reins. The reins are like the mind, and the driver is the intelligence. So, you have seen that the chariot is the chariot, which 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 is the chariot, वो हमारा मन और जो ड्राइवर है वो हमारा इंटेलिजेंस है 
and the passenger on the chariot is the soul, and the chariot itself represents the body. So you can see intelligent, the driver is there, the intelligence guiding, give, holding the reins, the mind, and the mind is controlling the senses. So it's described in Srimad Bhagavatam in relation to Maharaj Ambarish that Maharaj Ambarish, he was famous because he used all of his senses in the service of Krishna. But the very first thing he did was Savai Mana Krishna Parara Vindayor. He fixed his mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So, with the mind fixed on Krishna, then you engage the senses in the service of Krishna. The mind is higher than the senses. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Prabhu? You know, we're not Mayavadis. The Mayavadis say, Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. They say this world is not real. We don't agree with that. No, we say, Brahman Satyam Jagat Satyam. You know, <laughs> that this world is real, it does exist. We can't say it's all illusion. Mm. So we do have to. <clears throat> you're, I mean, the, you're, you're everything you see is cracked. You know that we say like a dream, that when we go back to Godhead, the dream is over. So we're just this world is just a dream, but <laughs> but at the same time, it, it's real. So. So when we go back to Godhead, then 
we'll, <laughs> we won't remember this world. Of course, that's all finished with. The dream is over when we go back to Godhead. Every night we have many, many dreams. They say somewhere like more than 30 dreams in one night. We don't remember them, but we, we dream so much. So the same way we're here in this world and we're moving, through many different bodies, we don't remember all the different bodies we've had over many lifetimes, it's all forgotten about. But once we go back to Krishna, to be with Krishna in the spiritual world, then we won't think any more about this world. So, while we're here, we must want to use this world for the service of Krishna. And sometimes Prabhupada would say to us that this is the spiritual world. You can, you, you, if we are in Krishna consciousness, then we see this world as the spiritual world. We see it all in relation to Krishna. Prabhupada was in New York, but he said, I'm always in Vrindavan because I'm always remembering Krishna. So we want to be always be in Krishna consciousness, then it, it doesn't make any difference where we are. Mm. Oh, okay. Yes. Madhuchi and, and yes, yes, from Hare Krishna. Simple, uh, simple and, uh, that we find very, very So, we have some knowledge, but we don't have practice. We don't practice So, we can say, uh, well, how to cultivate that kind of tolerance? Again, it's con conquering over the mind and senses. So particularly, we're talking about the mind. Tolerance comes in the mind that we have to have that mental control that we can tolerate the difficulties. You know, sometimes in the winter it gets very cold here, right? In this winter is very cold. You think, oh, I can't tolerate. You know, I know people who come from warm countries and they come here, they're, or they're in Vrindavan. And they say, oh, I can't tolerate it, it's so cold. Well, I say, well, look, there's 10 million people in Delhi, they're all caught tolerating it, you know. Why can't you tolerate it? So like that we have to see the, the problems which come, the difficulty, actually it's our mind which is creating the, the problem. There's no real problem but within our mind we're thinking, oh, I can't tolerate this. So, 
somebody may say something very bad to us, very nasty, they may insult us, we get very angry, I can't tolerate it, I'm going to take action. But somebody else, ah, oh, yeah, you insult me, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the Brahmana from Avanti Desh is a good example of how he practiced tolerance. Described in Srimad Bhagavatam, the story of the Avanti Brahman, he was a rich man and then he lost all of his money. And when he lo after he lost all of his money, he renounced and became a, a sannyasi, like a mendicant, and he would go begging. And people would know, oh, that's him. They remembered him, that he'd been a rich man and he was a nasty man when he was rich. He never gave any charity, he was very unkind, nobody liked him. And then when he lost all of his money, then they saw him coming as a beggar and they go, oh, oh. you know, they really, they would spit at him and they would just be so nasty and abusive to him. Oh, He'd have his begging bowl, they would put stool in it or something, you know. Or they pass urine, they pass urine on him, or pass foul air in him. The, the people did so, but he tolerated everything, and he he just tolerated it. He fixed himself on the super soul, the Lord in the heart, and he understood that by taking shelter of the super soul, the Lord in the heart, then he would cross over all the difficulties. So we have to see that whatever happens to us, it's the arrangement of the super soul. We say Krishna is the controller, right? He's the controller, we're not the controller. So we just have to accept whatever difficulties come on us and go on with our devotional service. So I encourage you, you read that story of the Avanti Brahman in 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam and you hear a very nice example how he tolerated and how he overcame all the difficulties. And there's a verse there which that Brahman, which that Avanti Brahman recited. And that verse is given to sannyasis to recite because in the course of taking sannyas you have many obstacles, many difficulties. So you recite that mantra and it helps you to become more tolerant. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yes. Hare Krishna. Okay. Any other question? Okay. 
थैंक यू ये प्रमाजक है I was wasting my life. <laughs> I was wasting my life in the world of sense gratification. So I met Prabhupada when I got initiation. I, I met him first in books. I got some books, I read the books, I went to the temple and I started going to the temple. When I was full-time devotee living in the temple, Prabhupada came there, he gave us initiation. I was initiated along with, you know Subhag Swami? You, does he come here, Subhag Swami? No? No, Subhag Swami. And he's a Bengali, but he, he joined in London. And I got initiated also with Mahavishnu Swami, you know him? Mahavishnu Swami, he also… We are, there were about fifteen, we all got initiated together, about fifteen of us. So, So, you know, I, before I joined, I studied, I, I, I graduated from university, I had an engineering degree. Oh, useless knowledge. <laughs> useless information. We have so many information technology, so much information technology, it's all useless technology. The real technology is Srimad Bhagavatam. So I worked for a few months, I had a job, I was working in London, I had a job, I got a book, I started going to the temple. The devotees said, I, I used to go every evening to RT and the devotees said, you can stay for the morning program if you want. So I, I said, well I'm not used to getting up at that time in the morning, you know, I'm big, big up. Anyway, I thought I'd try, so I started to stay in the temple, we go to morning program. And then after a few weeks they said, you know, you should give up that job. So I said, okay. There's so many jobs. You need a job, you can always get jobs. Don't don't be attached to your stupid job. So, like that but I became a devotee. I was… somehow I got to… I was in America, I went to America to do book distribution because in America they were doing more books there than in the UK. 
UK is not so rich as America. And I thought I will go to America and distribute books there. So I was in the USA distributing books and Gopal Krishna, he was not a sannyasi at that time, but Prabhupada wanted him to come back to India to help to develop the yatra in India. So he asked the temple president to get some men because there were not many devotees in India in that time. None of you were born. <laughs> 1975, were you born? Not I'm only one, yes. See? <laughs> so like that. Most of you, you were not, you were old men and old women then. You were in another body. so Gopal Krishna Maharaj asked the temple president, give me some men to bring to India. So he picked me because I was British, I'm not American, you see. So at that time, British people could come to India without a visa and they could stay as long as they liked. So he said, you come to India, you can stay. <laughs> So I came 75, I stayed up to 79. I was here at one point, even I became temple president in Hyderabad. And we did a lot of book distribution. I traveled all over India distributing sets of Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita. We would go to all the schools and colleges and universities, we go to wherever there was a library, we would go and tell them, you have to get these books. So when we would come, they would always ask us, you must give a talk to all the students. So we would give a talk, to, we'd give a lecture to all the students, tell them about Krishna. We'd make them all chant. Sablog Bali, Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna Krishna! Hare Hare! Hare Rama! Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama. Hare Hare, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, Madhas, for working with such a nice season. From Sambhara Ji, we have a second of our training. This is the purpose of India, of the second of our training today. Hare Krishna Mahamadu Vaibhya. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna! Krishna!